The Podcasting Dead is available on iTunes, Spotify, YouTube, and SoundCloud. Make sure to subscribe for more podcasts. And while you're at it, drop us a like. If you want to help support the channel and have access to extra content, secret contests, and more, make sure to search for us on Patreon. Patreon.com slash The Podcasting Dead. All right, welcome to Weird Wednesday. I'm Justin. I'm JP. And we're the Podcasting Dead. For, uh, make sure you check out our channel. We podcast about a wide array of things from the paranormal to conspiracies to The Walking Dead, other TV shows, and just what we're up to. So if you like podcasts in general, there's a decent chance you may enjoy our channel. And we'll talk about our Patreon before we wrap this thing up. But let's get into it, JP. We're talking about Skinwalker Ranch today. And now I'm going to go ahead and tell you, the listener, this will be kind of an ongoing thing because... There's just so much with Skinwalker Ranch that there's no way we have time to do everything in one podcast. And we're not really here to be one of those channels. We're not going to give you, like, the entire rundown. Like, we'll give you kind of a little bit of a history on it. And then we're just here to discuss our thoughts and just talk about the topic. Mm -hmm. So, uh, JP, before I even start, what do you know about Skinwalker Ranch? Uh, Not a whole lot, man. I mean, are they actively like breeding skinwalkers for like uh, the meat maybe the for the hide it's know, high in protein yeah of. absolutely yeah no actually uh skinwalker ranch which is also known as sherman ranch uh, this is a property that's located uh on approximately 512 acres which is a nice plot of land i've mentioned in other podcasts i really as i get older just want to own a ranch or a farm and damn 512 acres that's pretty awesome But uh, it's uh, southeast of Ballard, Utah, um, and uh, it's 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 got all kinds of insane uh, paranormal extraterrestrial activity on this Mm -hmm. ranch. So much so that and we'll talk about it here in a bit, but so much so that uh, when the rancher sold it, it was bought by this, I guess, billionaire who was who basically set up his own team of researchers to live and uh, live on and study the land to study the phenomenon so we're gonna we're gonna talk about that uh here in just a bit but you know uh I, originally i was watching there's a great channel on youtube you should check it out it's called bedtime stories it's one of my favorite when it comes to things like paranormal um uh, uh stories because he tells true stories and i like that he tells them with an open mind like he tells it it basically gives you the facts and, and tells it in a very story format, which is very easy to listen to. But then at the end, if there's some facts that contradict the paranormal aspect, he'll tell it. You know, like if this person reports hearing voices and, and then they happen to be a schizophrenic, he'll make sure to mention that before mm-hmm. he goes out. Now, while it could be paranormal, you know, there is it's something to keep in mind that she was a diagnosed schizophrenic. And it's very possible that this was all. So I like the way he does that. Um, but anyways, he I, he has a two part uh, series on Skinwalker Ranch, and I was listening to some of the uh, experiences, and I actually watched that documentary on Hulu, Hunt for the Skinwalker. And you know, it's uh, my thoughts about uh, all the way through the first documentary and halfway through the second. Uh, not sorry, not documentary. I had the first part of his guy's video, and then the second part. I just thought the rancher was behind all of it, and I'll tell you, I'll, I'll give you his info here in a bit. Uh, his name, well, actually, I can tell you, his name is uh, Terry. Well. It was owned from 1984 to 1992 by Terry and Gwen Sherman. And the the rich guy I was talking about that bought it from him was uh, Robert Bigelow. Mm -hmm. No relation to Deuce Bigelow, the male gigolo. Uh, But he owned it from 1996 to 2016. So 10 long years he had that ranch. And uh, Brandon uh, Fugel uh, is, I guess, who who bought the ranch now for five point four point five million is what it sold for in 2016. But so Terry is was like my prime suspect because from what we're told, all right, so they bought the ranch in 1984. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, again, my sources, because I, I hate to not cite sources, uh, are coming from, of course, the Wikipedia page and then bedtime stories uh report on Skinwalker Ranch and then also hunt for the Skinwalker on Hulu. But um, so according to bedtime stories, when they first got into the house, you know, the, the whoever owned it before them had left in a hurry. Yes. Uh, and sold it at an incredibly low price, which is horror movie 101. 
Like, you know, if it's too, my dad always told me growing up, if something's too good to be true, then it probably uh-huh. is. And he's been right about 99% of the time. But so they got this ranch and he had dreams of, of, of you know, like just making a living off of, of, of owning a ranch. You had a lot of head of cattle. Uh, it was, it was, it was kind of like I wanted to do, you know, like I would love to have a farm and get cattle and goats and all these different animals and such. But when they got there, they found a lot of chains. Chains. Like bolt like apparently these people have been had a lot of dogs to oh protect themselves God. with. You know, and like they had they them been, chained up the poor thing. Well, and had them chained up in in a way that yes, I, I hate when I hate chaining up dogs, but more of the dogs were like a security system, you know what I'm yeah. saying? To which I say let them off the chain because a loose dog is way scarier than a chained dog. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, I'm not in the business of breaking into people's homes, but I imagine I walk into your yard and there's a chain dog versus a free dog that's running at me. My ass is gone. But so they get there and they they realize that something was up. You know, well, why were these people so paranoid? And one of the clauses when uh, the Shermans bought the ranch was that they couldn't dig on the property unless they first got permission from the original owners. Uh, which to me, I'd have been like, why? It's my ranch. I mean, yeah. I want to go out there and dig a hole to hell. Why can't I do it? I bought the property. But I guess, you know, he got it at such a good price, he, he wasn't asking questions. Um, and the na- the reason why this is called Skinwalker Ranch is taken from the Skinwalker of Navajo legend, um, you know, con- which is a, a vengeful sh- a, a, a shaman, excuse me. I was about to say Sherman. <laughs> Too many sh in this. Sherman Helmsley, he's, yeah. But so, like, they hadn't, I, th- I don't even think they had unpacked yet, right? So one of the first odd things that happened was they get to the ranch, they're unpacking, and they look across the field, and they see this wolf coming towards them, just strolling towards them. And once it starts getting closer, they're like, holy crap, is that is that a wolf? Because it was so big. Like, they describe it as being three times the size of an average wolf. Three times the size. I mean, this sucker basically stood almost eye level oh with a grown man. And the whole family saw it uh, coming towards them. So it's getting closer. And when it comes up, it doesn't look like it's being threatening at all. And I'm pretty sure that one of them actually petted the animal and was like, you know, of course, being cautious. But then it's like the animal, the wolf just realized. Oh, there's steer over there because they had um, some animals with them. Mm-hmm. And the wolf all of a sudden just changes demeanor and starts attacking the animal. So the father tells his son to grab his 357 Magnum. So his son grabs his gun and he shoots the wolf. And I'm pretty sure it was at this point. It was either at this point or in a little bit because he shot him with two different guns. That a chunk of flesh fell, actually fell off the animal. However... Actually, that might have been later with the rifle. But anyway, so he shoots it with the 357 Magnum, and the animal seems completely unfazed. Doesn't even acknowledge that it's been shot. There's no blood on the ground, nothing. He shot it another... I know he shot it more than once with the 357 Magnum. So then he gets his rifle and shoots the animal. And at some point, a chunk of flesh drops off. And once the animal does kind of just wander off nonchalantly, uh, they realize, like, the flesh is rotten. Ooh. Like they pick up the flesh and it's rotten. Now, see, my my skepticism with Skinwalker Ranch is like ninety percent of the things that I have so far. Granted, that's why I said this is an ongoing thing. So, if you're really big into Skinwalker Ranch and you're like, no, the the team that was there had a lot of experiences, just hang tight. We're gonna get there because this is gonna be a. Well, 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 I mean, we might do other things in between these, but we'll be revisiting Skinwalker Ranch quite a bit because I find it fascinating. But a lot of the things happened to the to the ranch owner, to Terry. Because let me tell you what really made me think that he just was in on this. So he gets the ranch, claims all these crazy things happen, which supposedly neighbors reported on seeing things as well. He reports on all these weird things happening that I'm not, you know, wouldn't put it past someone trying to get attention that what the neighbor saw wasn't him trying to. Um, but then he sells it. For a good chunk of change to a to a very wealthy man who wants to research the paranormal. Then, after Mr. Bigelow buys the property, Terry convinces him to hire him as like the the ranch manager. So he's now still, you know, on the ranch that he just sold 
and getting probably paid a pretty good chunk of change. I mean, I assume eccentric billionaires that you know fund their own scientific teams, we've seen the movie, probably gave him a pretty good salary. So not only did he get a big chunk of change for his land, he still got to be on the land, and he was getting paid a handsome salary. Sure. Now, I don't know what his salary was, but I imagine if this was so horrific that you just couldn't take it no more, there would have to be a decent salary to go back on that ranch, wouldn't you think? You, yeah, one would think. Um, and then that was something that got me too. Like, if this was so bad, then why would you even go back to that ranch? Um, but again, that the name of this video is not "Why Skinwalker Ranch Is a Hoax" because that's just as far as I've gotten. I'm not, and I'm not saying 100 percent that I think Terry was full of shit. That just kind of is where my mind was while listening to the story. I can't help it when my mind automatically starts thinking, and my mode of thinking was, why would you go back to the ranch? Yeah, and maybe he had an experience, an encounter, and then just kept embellishing and embellishing and embellishing just, you know, for the money and the women, you know. Yeah, the thing about Skinwalker Ranch is it's not narrowed down to one type of paranormal. That's why I think it's so fascinating because we've got reports of everything from poltergeist to UFOs to uh, beasts because there was one time, there was one story that Terry told, well, that was told about Terry and the team that I was like, man, that just seems like a man bear pig situation. Because what it was, was Terry is like driving and he sees this beast and I think he saw it in a tree or something and he pulls over and its its eyes are reflecting the light, which is something, you know, obviously human eyes don't do. So he knew it was some kind of beast of the wild. So he pulls over, pulls out his rifle and takes a shot. And the animal seems to fall out the tree or at least jump out of the tree. So then he calls the team to tell him what he just shot, tell them what he just shot at. The whole team shows up and they're running like through the woods. Mm -hmm. Terry gets separated from him and starts yelling like, here it is. I've got it. And fires a few more shots. But the team never sees what he's chasing. You know, you see what I'm getting at? Yeah. Yes. A little convenient. Yeah. Right. And again, the, 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 the entities at Skinwalker Ranch are reported to be very intelligent. Like they are one step ahead all the time. So that could be the point. They could they could very well be real and be manipulating things to make it look like Terry is perpetuating, you know, these these stories in order to make him look crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like the store, the property, the homestead they lived in was like haunted paranormal, uh, uh, poltergeist activity, disembodied voices, things like that were heard there. And what we'll do is if you enjoy this podcast and you enjoy us talking about Skinwalker Ranch, then we, uh, we're happy to start doing that actually makes our lives easier to have one thing to focus on for a few weeks. Yeah. We can start focus on specific things, the UFO encounters there, the, the, the poll, right today, we're just kind of giving an overview and discussion of Skinwalker Ranch. But if you want us to get more specific and our buddy, Der, uh, one of our longtime listeners, Derek Patterson has way more experience and actually doesn't live too far from Skinwalker Ranch. So if he's willing, you know, we could definitely consult with him, maybe get him on the podcast or get some information from him, you know, yeah, have him tied yeah. into it because he's the man and he knows, he know he's the one that actually got, I'd heard about this ranch, but he's the one that actually piqued my interest in it again. Yeah. Um, but uh, one interesting time reportedly Terry had, they were seeing these blue lights floating around the property. So Terry turned loose, I think two of his dogs and they chased it. Well, it might've been three dogs. It was two or three dogs. They chased this, this blue orb into the woods, supposedly. Terry didn't chase after him, but he heard whines and eventually found his dog's remains like burnt oh to a crisp. Oh like they God. had just been Is there a dragon on the roasted. Property? It seems it, to me that's that's that seems typical of like extraterrestrial activity. Yeah. You know, maybe they send out these little drones to. And I think a lot of times with extraterrestrial activity that what we might see could just be drones or avatars. Mm -hmm. I mean, oh, you're, yeah. they're, they're smart. They're, they're smart enough to travel light years and, and through space to get to us, or maybe they use wormholes, which is even fancier. It makes sense that on an unfamiliar planet, they wouldn't actually get out of the ship themselves. They would send out drones or they would send out, you know, avatars of themselves to, you know, but I, I, I could be wrong. That's just always been, a lot know. of people, a lot of people think that it's true, but, 
the dogs died. They were like roasted, burnt to a crisp, Ooh. just like a mold of dog remain flesh ball just there. And I think that was the final straw. I think once that happened, that's when Terry put the farm up for sale and decided to uh, to just call it a day. But we haven't even gotten started on the cattle mutilations. Oh, God. I mean, this guy, and I mean, there's there's some more really, really wild stories. I mean, there's stories of cattle just disappearing and reappearing, and and and, a weird, and, they, and there are arguments for the legitimacy of this that makes sense, such as how hard it is to get, you know, certain cattle around each other, or how it, how how hard it is to quickly move them. Like at one point, and again, we can get more in depth with this if if the listeners like. But there's like one story where. The cattle were teleported, like just in a matter of a minute from somewhere, and they were all of a sudden in this cattle trailer, like in a daze. Uh-huh. Which, again, I might be wrong. I'm pretty sure that was witnessed primarily by Terry and his wife, and then they recounted the story to they like once they like because the cattle were apparently like in a daze, and they once they snapped out, they started freaking out, and they let them out of the thing and spent hours trying to wrangle them. But I think it wasn't until after they had let them loose that they called the team in. And of course, the team saw how hard it was to wrangle them all up, and mm-hmm. might you know might have came to the conclusion of like, oh, well, they couldn't have done it because look how hard it is to wrangle them, not knowing that maybe they spent hours doing that beforehand to set up this elaborate thing. But um, but here's what's cool too about the team: the team that um, that Mr. Bigelow hired. Now these were not believers in the paranormal. He hired. His team was comprised of well-respected and well-known physicists, biologists, things like people that, and that was, it was uh, from what I've read or, or, or heard, it was a very rigorous process as for him recruiting his team. Like he did not want people who strongly believed in the paranormal. In fact, he wanted skeptics. He wanted people whose first instinct to being exposed to something paranormal, their first instinct was to try to rationalize it. Like, that wasn't an alien. That's lights reflecting off of this thing, which reacts to... That's what he wanted. And I feel like that's what anybody who actually wants to do real research would want. Because if you can convince someone who doesn't believe in that stuff that it's real, then you've got a better better chance. They call this place the Disneyland of paranormal activity. Man, I, I would like to, uh, I'd like to go there. And that's good. He got objective uh, professionals to... Mm-hmm. research his stuff it's kind of like the uh, the bigfoot hunters you know the sasquatch people they always have their their skeptic their scientist who doesn't believe in the sasquatch and that that's good to have you gotta have a scully you know oh yeah absolutely well it keeps you in check keeps Precisely. you in check and the name of the team was uh was nids n-i-d-s um and I'm trying to find what that the what that is the acronym for. I, I knew that, and now of course I can't remember it. Nerds in dire strait. I don't even need to read what whatever it is. That's what it's going to be. Okay. So, Mr. Bigelow, if you happen to listen to this, your team has been renamed. There's nothing you can do about it. Yeah. But um, it's interesting to note that it is bordering an Indian reservation. Uh, and it has been dubbed the UFO Ranch due to its 50-year uh, history of odd events that have said to have been taking place there. Um, there's there's been books. There's been it, it's it, it, one one theory that a lot of people seem to have is that there's a portal there. That these are not paranormal ghosts or ghouls, but they are extra-dimensional beings that. There is just, you know, they've been studying magnetic uh, fields in the area. Mm-hmm. Um, and some people think that, and it's, I think it's, I've actually, it's, it's been reported by people having seen doors, like open, just like doors out in the field in the mm-hmm. sky. And beyond these doors, you can just see another world. Would you, would you walk through the door? No. Like, I would walk up to it and peer in, but no. You wouldn't, would you stick your head in? And just don't think around? I wouldn't now. Don't mean like, don't, don't let that mean, you know, don't let that uh, convince you, JP, that I'm not, you know, adventurous or something. Yeah, but I'm also cautious. What, I don't know what's beyond the door. What if I tied like a, a really long rope to you and I held it? And I'd so have to I look in the door for in. a while, man. Yeah. I'm not going to blindly rush into any situation in life. I'll pull you, tug on it three times if you want me to pull you up out of there. That probably ain't the first time you've said those words. No, probably not. Probably not meaning the same thing. What, would you? 
If we were, let's say that, uh, let's say that our buddy Derek Patterson got us an in, and we got to go explore Skinwalker Ranch, mm-hmm. and you and I are walking along the field, and all of a sudden this portal opens up, would you just walk right through it? No. If I, I tied a rope to no, you? No, I ain't want no. <laughs> yeah. But remember, two tugs, everything's fine. Three tugs, I pull you out. Well, everything's fine. I wouldn't need a tug, right? Well, just, just the rope just, would probably know, stop. Just to check in. Stop moving if I died. Um, but there are, there are a lot of, um, there are a lot of more players at it. You know, I mean, again, I, I will say as I went on through the through research and watching the documentary and, and on and, and YouTube documentaries and reading, I did start to kind of back off my stance that Terry was behind everything. Terry and his wife. Yeah. Um, I, because there, there were more wit. There were a lot, a lot of the situations involved Terry and his wife, but not all of them. It does sound like sort of like a border between dimensions where things kind of bleed over. You know it. Yep. Check this out now. When uh, Nid's founder uh, Robert Bigelow purchased the ranch, he did so for two hundred thousand dollars. But now, Jeez. but then oh. sold it. For four point five million. So, do we have an instance of faked paranormal activity just to increase the value of something? You know what I mean? Yeah, that could be it, man. That could be it. I mean, that's quite the. Uh, I mean, he owned it for ten years, yes. But even ten years, I mean, two hundred thousand to four point five million. That's quite the profit. Yeah, no kidding. Now, I don't know how much money he lost through the years paying his staff and all of that. Mm-hmm. You know, so I don't know if 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 the you know I'm not a good finance person. Never been good with numbers. So the difference between two hundred thousand and four point five million. I don't know if he spent that amount during his time owning it because I'm sure that could be the counter argument. Was how is that a profit? He had to pay several salaries and. Blah 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 blah, and this and that, and property tax. And by the time you know, he'd probably spent four point five million. You know, I don't know, but that is quite a difference in number there. Yeah, yeah, it is. Ooh. Um, but uh, there have been people that have said that if you don't believe in it, you're delusional. To which oh, really? I would say, and I mean, I, I could understand that statement if you were there, saw it with your own eyes. But I mean, this is all he said, she said, you know, and. The, I think there are a few little videos and pictures out there, but I mean, at no point during knowing you were living at a place with, you know, like I'm wondering, and again, let me know, please. We're, we're just here to discuss, you know, we're not your professors. We don't know everything there is to know about these topics. You know, was there surveillance footage anywhere on the grounds? Because you think they'd have trail cams everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Oh no, I'm an idiot. You know what? I am such an idiot. Somebody's probably already called me out on it in the com- in the comments section. I said 1996 to 2016 was 10 years. That's 20 years. Oh yeah, but is. you didn't catch it either. I didn't. Either. <laughs> okay, so my uh, you know my I thought when I because I watched the documentary and then when I said 10 years, like just something in the back of my mind was like I thought he owned it longer than that. Hmm. But no, uh, it was owned from 1984 to 1992 by Terry and Gwen Sherman, and from 1996 to 2016 by Robert Bigelow, and then from 16 to present, um, Brandon Fugel via Antimantium Holdings. Wolverine's involved okay, in this yeah. mofo. Oh. Um. But I don't know, man. I mean, from the outs, and I haven't given you the full scoop. I mean, there's much more to it. I mean, there are uh, outside sources that have cited things. I mean, the cattle mutilations, they found cattle. I mean, you can find the pictures online. The cattle mutilations are very precise. I mean, now I really don't know that I want to accuse Terry of cutting up his own livestock in this. You know what I mean? That's a bit of a, yeah. it's one thing to fake uh, our house is haunted to get some attention. It's another to straight up brutalize animals. To, yeah, to, like burning dogs. And all, but the cat, as I've seen on the documentary, you see the cattle, and I mean, like it's it, it, they like they, they lost a lot of head of cattle on this property, and, and and there's one where they have a calf that they get on videotape, and I mean, it is like all of the organs are removed, a part of the ears cut off, and you can look at the cut. It's not a tear. It's not a wild animal grab. I mean, something very sharp just went right across the ear. Um, no blood, hardly no blood anywhere. I mean, I've hunted my whole life, and I would, you know, I, I could tell you when you remove organs from an animal, 
Oh, there's blood. Yeah. There's lots of blood. Jeez. And there was no blood. Uh, and it's just, it's all very bizarre. The cattle mutilations are, are very bizarre. And it almost sounds like extra dimensional beings are coming into our reality. And of course, they're like, well, we can't straight up dissect humans. That would lead to a lot more people coming on this right. land. But these cattle... You know, maybe they're curious about us, you know, I mean, because you just we haven't talked about it. I wanted to podcast, but I hadn't had time to read it. But apparently some pretty reputable sources are uh, saying that scientists have now said there's evidence of a parallel universe to ours where time runs backwards, runs backwards, runs backwards. Don't know much so more than that. I'm just reading the headline. You, you're born not in that way. Life? Not 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 that simple. But um but, you know, a, a parallel universe is definitely made up of different, you know, could operate by completely different laws of physics right. than our universe does. So perhaps these beings are just curious. If I were going to put my money on a paranormal, um, like, cause of all of this, I would just go with the portal to another universe is somehow located on that property. Maybe there's high magnetic fields. I'm not a physicist. I don't really know the properties needed to create a portal to another universe. But from what they're saying, if it's not all just a hoax to get attention, then, you know. Yeah, it, it, it does sound like there's a another dimension just kind of bleeding in right there for whatever reason. And I mean, all kinds of, of, of crazy looking animals, too. I mean, like I said, they've reported seeing like red eyes. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, uh, they've had... Uh, they they've had, apparently they've detected like invisible objects emitting destructive magnetic fields, which mm. I don't know about you, but to me that sounds like a, a UFO using cloaking technology. Yeah. Um. And the cattle the cattle mutilation is 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 very bizarre. I, if you're squeamish, I wouldn't, but if you've got the stomach for it, you should really look up Skinwalker Ranch like cattle mutilations and just look at the level of precision with whatever did this was not like an animal unless that animal just sucked every drop of blood and just had the sharpest teeth out there you know but uh i don't know man it's very interesting skinwalker ranch if you want to hear more we could definitely dress this up and make it more of a presentation clearly you can tell that i'm just kind of repeating and relaying information that i have uh, read and heard and and seen so you know if you want us to get more presentation style with this and you know kind of delve into the different paranormal happenings because i mean it's way more than i've said oh, now yeah. this oh, has yeah. been something years in the making uh, so i mean it's way more than just all oh, burnt dogs a cut up cow uh, a werewolf thing and you know it's, it's way more than that i mean there's there they they actually at one point the paranormal activity at the homestead was so strong that uh the entire family was sleeping in one room I wonder Together. if there's like a, a Native American history. Like if the Native Americans have a history of seeing that kind of stuff, you know, in that area. Uh, that I'm not 100% about, but I do know that, um, you know, they've had Native Americans speculate mm -hmm. that, you know, it's it's cursed land and right. things like that. So, um, yeah, but we'll definitely dive a little bit more into Skinwalker Ranch. If you're interested now, if you're like, ah, this, this sucks, move to the – I really do want to talk about the other dimension too. I just need to read yeah, about yeah. that. You know, um, where Skinwalker Ranch, man, that's one of those things where I almost thought about not even talking about it on the podcast. Because once I dove into it, I was like, holy crap, this isn't like just discussing this dimension that they think they might have detected evidence of or, or like a single haunting in a home. I mean, this is like this almost seems like where every paranormal entity on Earth comes from. It's almost like if you watch Lost and how spoilers if you don't want spoilers cover them is but you know the island is kind of like the a plug that sits on this hole that keeps evil from mm -hmm. getting out and ravishing the world it almost seems like skinwalker ranch is where that opening is and they're all just flooding from it Could maybe be, jack man. needs to get there and find the man in black and take him out yeah but uh, nonetheless, let us know your thoughts. Thank you so much for listening. And also, be sure to check out our Patreon, because if you like podcasts, you might like our Patreon for as little as $1 a month. JP, I don't know about you, but $12 a year. I ain't the, the wealthiest of fellows, but that's manageable. Yeah, and you get a lot of bang for your buck. You get a lot of bang for your buck. We're talking eight extra podcasts a month that only patrons get to hear. 
uh, which are a lot more of a laid back format. I mean, we could talk paranormal. We we just start talking and it goes wherever. But the conversations are always usually pretty interesting. Um, helps the channel, and we're definitely again we are going. I've been saying for months, but we are going to start doing some tier type stuff to you know give those that are doing five and ten and even twenty dollars a little bit more bang for their buck. However, we will never take the eight extra podcasts away from you. That's something you will get for just simply a dollar a month. So make sure to check it out. Patreon.com slash the podcasting dead. We're available on SoundCloud, YouTube, iTunes, and supposed to be Spotify, but I've heard from some listeners. They've had trouble finding us on there. So Hmm. check us out and uh, we'll see you next Wednesday for more weird Wednesday and patrons. We'll see you tomorrow for Patreon exclusive podcast. I'm Justin. I'm JP. And we're the podcasting dead.